Let me know when you start. Great. Okay, yeah. So I, I'm really happy to be here and thank you all for all the work and advocacy you do. I know it's I know it's not easy, especially uh nowadays where we do all this work throughout the year and then we come to session and realize that we have a math problem and that there just aren't enough votes on some of these really key priorities. Um, but you know, as you may have been seeing, if you've been tracking uh this session so far, that's that's kind of what we're running into in the house. And I, I tell people that, um, you know, a short session uh, in the minority, and I'm not even just talking about political party, I'm talking about, like, uh, you know, on this issue, uh, unfortunately, they, you know, it's become more partisan than it needs to be. Um, you know, the it's going to be a difficult task to try to get some of our priorities through. Um, I'll give you the examples of my bills. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted to put uh, at least help schools adopt solar uh, and give them guidance on funding mechanisms and federal money that they could get. And uh, you know, even members of the committee on the other in the other party liked the bill, but they were just told to vote against it, and so they voted against it. Period. End of sentence. Uh, no discussion, really. Uh, and uh, all I was told, the only question I was asked was, "We don't need this bill, right?" And I answered, "Yes, we do need this bill," but. That, that was the only discussion really that that occurred um and and the, the bill was really watered down from what we've done in past years but um you know it was good to at least go through the process of figuring out uh you know so, what what we can and can't pass um moving forward as well as you know if we do get back a majority um you know at least we have several different versions of a really good bill on that issue and so we, we've already done a lot of the work um a lot of times what happens is you have an election in november and you have an outcome that maybe you expect or maybe you didn't expect and then you're scrambling in december so if you've already done the work beforehand then you don't have to scramble as much right so if if we let's say this november win the house but lose the senate and we're back in a split House Senate a dynamic, you know, maybe I bring the same bill back and see if Senate Republicans like it better than House Republicans. So that's just an example. Um, same thing with another bill that um, uh, I'm trying to make shared solar, um, the minimums a lot more affordable. We have the, as you probably know, you know, we've got one of the highest, if not the highest rate in the country. And we just have a model that um, I really don't like, but, um, and then APCO territory uh, does, doesn't um, do shared solar and so i wanted to expand it to apco territory and i wanted to lower that minimum and it, it only costs um you know non-participating ratepayers you know pennies uh not dollars uh to to help facilitate this but um you know apparently pennies was too much for some people as well uh there really wasn't any discussion on that bill as well they were just again told to to kill it um and uh, and then i just wanted to see what we could do uh, when it came to um, rate making, uh, you know, we've got several bills, uh, some of which have been heard, some of which haven't, to just um, see how we can make um, uh, clean energy more affordable uh, to uh, Dominion customers and um, to just people generally uh, when it comes to our rate making process, which I, I know this group knows um, all about. So, you know, we, um, you know, there's still some bills out there that are, um, you know, alive, but if they're alive, it's because they were introduced in the Senate or passing the Senate and may not have a very good future in the House uh, or vice versa. Um, I think uh, in the end, though, I, I would say that um, some of the bills that are, you know, in your priorities and my priorities were bills that even the administration supports uh, and that, you know, if we do get the numbers back on our side, you know, we can pass and have signed into law without having to wait um, till 2025 and beyond. So I, I think there's um, room for optimism, certainly. And I'm happy to go down the list of, of bills and um, answer questions about any and specifically, uh, you know, don't, I may not remember the the exact bill numbers on all of them. So if you say HB 1770 or something, I may have to look it up quickly. But But generally, I would say, um, you know, look, this session was never going to be very productive, pr productive on almost every issue, certainly not this issue, but um, I consider it productive in the sense that we 
um, did a lot of work on many different versions of all of these pieces of legislation, critical pieces of legislation, and um, and that's going to serve us really well, um, regardless of the outcome in November. Um, the last one I'll say is uh, clean cars, um, and, you know, repealing the the clean car requirements. Uh, I was a little worried that we might lose a few Democrats on that issue and and lose that fight. But um, I think the Democratic caucus stuck together really well, has stuck together really well. And and I don't see that. It, that's already died in the Senate. Uh, we put up 48 no's in the House. And so I, I was a little worried about that one. Um, there's a few others where, again, I, I saw a lot of unity, at least on the Democratic side. And then on uh, uh, ratepayer protections, you know, you still have that, um, you know, dynamic of, um, of you know, there's some Republicans that are sympathetic, some Democrats that are not. Uh, and so, you know, I, I don't know how the math is going to change um, this November, but um, I know that when we had a majority in the House, that House Democrats passed everything when it came to ratepayer protections and, you know, kind of stalled in the Senate, but the, that could have a monumental shift um, this November. And uh, you all know, uh, you all probably know that, but, um, you know, even the, the governor, um, you know, is very sympathetic on that issue. And I, I could see us working something out uh, if we have the right people um, elected in November. So I, I just wanted to give a brief high level overview and, and so that we could have more time for discussion and questions and things like that. But it's really nice to be here and thank you all for all you do. Well, thank you. And, you know, people working with uh, lawmakers like you is a joy for us. It really makes it kind of all worthwhile. So um, we appreciate everything you do. So we have a couple questions to kick it off. I see Annette, do you want to uh, go first? You should be able to unmute yourself, Annette. Oh. No. Oh, yeah, it did work. There, we go. there it did. Okay, but at first it said the host wasn't allowed. Oh, okay. Hi, Sue Haas. I, I'm, you know, I'm Annette Lang. Um, and I was there on Thursday for the Affordable Energy Lobby Day. Thank you for speaking to us. And um, I had the pleasure or maybe the opposite of going into Dick Saslaw's office uh, with Stair Calhoun and with uh, Monique. And I'll tell you what worried me. I mean, his position is no secret, but you know, of course we went in there on the Affordable Energy Act, the Rate Adjustment Clause Reform, and then you know, shared solar, um, and also the sh utility shutoff. His response, of course, is, well, I have the omnibus bill. I'm, you know, it's SB 1265. And we're incorporating everything into SB 1265 and even the Virginia Clean Economy Act is gonna be in there. And, and um, uh, it was very troubling to me to see, cause I don't, Monique knows the details of 1265. I don't, and I, Monique will probably say what needs to be said, not me, but, but I do know that, um, uh, David, why am I blanking on David's last? Marsden made three changes to it already that made it somewhat more palatable. But but overall, I don't think it's palatable because it's going to keep all these racks and and then increase profit margins. So as what concerns me is that he's going to woo some of the Democratic senators into agreeing to this omnibus bill on the theory that it it'll cover all these other things and you don't need to worry. I mean, am I just excessive? Cause it seems like a strategy to me because I heard, I think you might've said, or no, it was Rip that said that Frita signed on to the um, Affordable Energy Act, HB 1604. And that's so unusual. I'm like, well, was that a strategic decision so that he can say, oh, now I'm doing this. You know, I, that just worries me. What's your thoughts on that? And, and just to be clear, that's that big dominion bill. Um, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, and a exactly. substitute is going to be introduced on Monday, and Dominion's having a meeting with a bunch of advocates to 
tell them about it. It's not a discussion. It's not a negotiation. It's they're going to be briefed on it by the lawyers on Monday morning at 9 a.m. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I'll just say that, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily see eye to eye with Senator Sasla on this. That's no secret, but no, no, who would? Right. <laughs> well, so, some people do. I, I think his messaging on this, if you call that messaging, isn't going to convince anyone who, who who's kind of, you know, the same thought process has the same thought process I, as I do. Um, they're not going to convince any of us to or trick any of us into supporting it just because he's calling it an omnibus. Um, I uh, I think people. I'm more worried about Sue has. I hate to interrupt, but I'm more worried about senators like my own Barbara Favola, who kind okay. of is a, a Dick Sasslaw protege, and I like Barbara for a million reasons, but she's you know she's not she's not up on energy and that those sort of questions. So I'm just worried they'll get enough Democrats with all the Republicans, and then it's going to pass your house because you you know we don't have the numbers in the house. So that's. That's really, you know, I'm like, am I going to go down to Richmond to knock on Barbara's door right when it goes to a floor vote and say, please don't do this? But um, that's what worries me. The Senate soft Democrats. Mm. Sure. Yeah. You know, I. Uh, I like to think that, um, you know, the senators are thoughtful about these things and independent minded about these things and OK, you know, to stay the course on on their stance, regardless of whether, you know, whatever messaging or whatever he's trying to push. Uh, I don't know, I, I can I can talk to Senator Favola if that's helpful uh, and see, I don't know what she's thinking right now. I don't know what other individuals, I, I know generally though, the, um, you know, I've, I've had to whip bills and slip bills through the Senate before on rate making and have gotten, a, you know, one in particular gotten through um, miraculously and um, it surprised me sometimes. The, the The thing about this issue is it's so complicated that yes. in the end, it's difficult for people to wrap their heads around. And so they just kind of get into this mindset of, well, this is a clean Virginia or this is a Dominion bill. Like, you know, who's and then they just pick a team rather than looking at um, exactly what it does and why it does it. So, well, um, Suhas, if, if at the appropriate point you would or some point talk to Barbara Favola, I mean, in your inimitable way, I, I just am a little bit concerned because, you know, it's he I'll tell you what Saslaw said in the meeting. He said he said, I am confident my 1265 will pass. I know it is going to pass. And for him to be that confident, I'm like, oh, boy. He said, And I said, why? Why do you have such confidence in that? And he says, because I have I brought more people into the process. And um, and of course, Marsden got it through committee by adding three, by improving it by three, you know, three, uh, three improvements, uh, changing before their guarantee. What was it, Monique? It was, um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably, we're going to talk more about this later, but he, he had, they hadn't even made the improvements yet, Annette. When they got oh, they haven't even done that. But anyway, subcommittee and it'll be on, it's, we, it's, it's I, very scary to me with the way SAS law was so confident it was going to pass. Well, and yeah. And he's kind of always I, like I that just, though with his bills, right? That, yeah, uh, that's been yeah. my experience. He's, he's just a confident guy. and um, Oh, so, so I shouldn't worry about that. Well, well I, I mean, I, I, I have heard um, from other folks that they are in the 90% confidence range that that bill is going to pass the Senate. That there's not much more that can be done to stop it in the Senate and that there it may be more fruitful to try to stop it in the House. So I don't know, Suhas, if you have a thought about that. Um, yeah, it's it's not gonna get a lot of Democratic votes in the House, but it'll, it'll get some. I know- Well, it's gonna get all the Republicans in the House. So that's all you, if we're well, counting on the House to stop this, not, I don't- Not think, necessarily. But yeah. And, and and this is, you know, one of our priorities for this um, session was to make sure that our progressive lawmakers and candidates have good messaging to go into the campaign with. 
And if the messaging around this bill is, you know, if it passes, is that the Democrats help Dominion raise the rates on consumers, I don't think that's a very good message. So well, and how tricky. well is that going to play for the governor as well, right? Right. Well, He's all tricky, about right? lowering let's, the let's, let's, let's hear Sue Haas, yeah. Well, that last part you said is tricky because, politically because I, I think this, the concession they're making is that they're going to lower what the rates would have been otherwise short term to give um, some people political wins and then and then raise them longer term, um, you know, and, and have a have a process by which to raise them longer term a lot higher than they would have been. Right. Yeah. So it's like a political game. And and I'm seeing this happen, you know, the the lobbyists who are kind of behind this. I, I'm I'm seeing them doing it with other clients too now. It's like this um this like carrot to entice the the administration, which is you know, looking at okay, I, we want when's going into let's say a presidential campaign or a US Senate campaign. So you know, if we can show that we lowered costs on this and that, then you know, that's gonna make us look be really strong and it, mm -hmm. you know, we can stick the next governor and future governors with this problem, right? So that that's what makes it complicated because the this governor really doesn't like Dominion either. And um, but it gets complicated, I guess, um politically. Yeah. Okay, Susan. Well, I was gonna go back to the sort of the small beans of the solar on schools. Mm -hmm. Um, any chance that'll go through a different committee on the way back through the house after it passes through the Senate? No, and you know, the dynamic that'll that will you will start to see play out is uh, senators will be killing House Republican bills, and then House Republicans will retaliate and kill Democratic Senate bills, and so no one will have any remorse for killing the others' bills, and um, uh, that's why I told people this is not going to be a productive session in a lot of ways, um, and and we're already starting to see that. I mean, my my bills were all put put on the kill list. Um, so even bills like local Loudoun County bills were killed this session. I, I told my county going in, like, you know, no matter how innocent the bill is, you know, just, we'll do it next year, I promise you. But this session, it's it's not going to work out. Yeah, uh, say what you will about the Republicans, but they have discipline. Yeah, the, not really. Um, like one of my bills, a few of my bills, they've had to gavel out because they liked them so much and they had to kind of get their people in line and one of them they actually passed on accident uh oh that's gonna be a floor fight yeah so uh i've i've got a great relationship across the aisle and so people feel bad <laughs> doing that but um you're right that generally they've been very very uh um disciplined and to a fault almost i think they're oh, absolutely you know passing bad policy killing good policy by objective standards. So no harm if my middle schoolers go after them with TikTok or something? They should totally go after them. Okay. Are we still recording? <laughs> <laughs> you welcome middle TikTok, school. TikTok, let's add community. with TikTok. Go after them with TikTok. <laughs> Not literally. I just had a quick comment, um, Delegate. I saw you at the... Uh, at the affordable energy um, day, lobby day. And we were great, happy to have you speak that morning. I wondered if you could maybe end on an up note, which is, I loved your comment about looking more at the long-term, the way you wrapped up your comments, given yeah, all that we've just discussed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, the point I made uh, what, at that event was we should be legislating, not just for the next couple of years, right? Like um, some people are trying to do, but, we'd be legislating for our grandkids and for future generations and for many, many decades to come. And, uh, you know, politics doesn't lend itself to that, but that's what a responsible policymaking is, is, is looking ahead. And, and that's why I, I don't feel down about this session, no matter what happens, because I know that people are starting to care about the issues that, that you all work on because of the work you all have done and what you're doing is working from the ground up and we're, you know, we're, we're working hard from the top down here but we need you all and we need both equally 
And uh, I'm very optimistic about next session because of all the work that's gone into this session. So I yeah, that's my positive note is that um, you should feel up, you should keep fighting, even if um, a bill that you don't like um, passes, uh, you know, we can always come back. I've, I've, you know, brought and passed repeal bills of bad utility bills before, and I'll do it again uh, if that's what we need to do next session, if we have the votes. Well, that's very encouraging. And um, a couple of us will uh, are attending the rules committee um, hearing virtually tomorrow morning to um, to speak in favor of a couple of the study bills, one include, which is um, Delegate Rome's bill on the data center study, um, you know, the impact of data centers. So just before you leave, any thoughts about that, that bill, you know, studying the impact of data centers on the climate and transportation and infrastructure and so forth? Sure. Yeah, I, I hate that we have to study before acting in Virginia, but it sounds, you know, that's the first thing I learned when I came to session was I had all these uh, great ideas and people told me I need to study them first. But, you know, if we need to study things first, let's study them. And uh, and then that way we can act upon them and point to the study. And uh, and so, I you know, I, I think those study bills are I've learned are more important than they seem. And uh, so I hope I wish uh, all of those patrons tomorrow the best of luck and all of you the best of luck. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's just been a, such a pleasure to have you here. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll all unmute and say thank you. Shall we? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Uh, can I, can I quickly oh. ask a, a, a question before you go? Um, my background is in tax law, and um, and I sent a letter on you know the uh, the data centers today, um, and and one of the one of the issues um, that the 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 call to action didn't really talk about um, the subsidies, but you know Amazon's market cap is over a trillion dollars. Um, and data centers are stuff that they ought to be building with their own money. Uh, and is anybody kind of focused on the fact that that Virginia is giving money to, you know, a company that's got, you know, a, a, a market cap in excess of a trillion dollars? I mean, I, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> yes. Uh... I um I I've never wanted to be in local local government like board of supervisors or school board, uh, but um this job has made me more interested in that because I I my our land use policy is baffling to me, uh, in parts of the state I live in, and so uh, I I don't know I think the reason they they encourage more data centers and want to attract them is because they don't add to the traffic and they um some of the tax revenue goes back to the county without uh there being um um you know a, a huge cost to the county but um you know there's there's more to life than money i i would rather pay more taxes sometimes than and and have like you know something more interesting in my community than i have to drive by data centers all the time but um you know, I don't make the land use policy, unfortunately. And once you build a data center, you know, it's it's really hard for it not to be a data center anymore. Um, and what if we find some sort of technology that as usurps data centers, where does that leave us, right? Um, where has that left all the coal plants in, you know, different parts of the state? <coughs> I don't know. that. But I'm I'm not the I, I wouldn't call myself an expert in land use policy, but I, I think you are hitting on something. Right. I mean, but the land use policy is <laughs> different from the subsidy. I mean, you know, and and obviously the land use pro, pro, uh, policy is probably the more important issue here. But it troubles me that we are subsidizing a company that is worth 
over a trillion dollars. I mean, I would rather spend, I mean, I, I give Amazon lots of my money and, you know, they make their money off of me that way, but I don't really want to subsidize them with my tax dollars, which I think is a, you know, and just, well, yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's just kind of appalling. You know? <laughs> I'll make this argument, though. Um, so, yeah, generally, it, it doesn't seem like it makes much sense. Uh, I guess the exception, we don't do this as much in Virginia, but uh, as much as you would think, it seems like we do, but we don't. But um, like New York, for instance, just is setting aside billions of dollars to attract a semiconductor um, company. And they don't even know what the semiconductor company is. They're just trying to um, take advantage of federal money in the CHIPS Act. Um, you know, we don't have that sort of readiness right now, but we're spending money on um, getting land ready to attract different types of companies. Um, right now, it's like a very competitive situation for states to attract a company. And so companies know this. And so if you don't provide any sort of incentives, the companies won't come. And then you end up with um, either it's like a government contractor or it's nobody's coming. And then, you know, more people leave the state. You don't attract as many jobs. Um, but if you attract like high paying jobs, like let's say, you know, uh, you know, a semiconductor manufacturing, um, that leads to, you know, a lot of multipliers, which may be worth it. Um, the thing that I always caution people, though, is you know, math is a tricky thing. Sometimes you're a tax lawyer, you know, so like, if you think that you're going to spend a billion dollars to attract, you know, let's say a, a micron and um, with the, and your model says that you're going to, you know, create a certain number of jobs and you'll make that billion back in three or four years. Like let's also, let's also like take into consideration the impact on the environment, the impact on the community surrounding that facility. Um, you know, what costs are going to be borne by the state that aren't on paper. Um, you know, th there's a lot of things like highways we'll have to build, things like that. Uh, I always caution people that um, we need, this is something that we should study, um, is we really need to be precise about it. Because I think we've made a few bad deals in recent years that um, I wish that we can't walk back now, frankly. So, um, but you know, you're a tax lawyer, maybe you can help us out next time. Um, I'm, happy like to do that. I'm happy to do that. And, and, you know, if you're, if your goal is jobs and you tie your incentives to jobs, you don't just, you know, and I, my background is actually in particular legislation and regulation. I spent a lot of my career drafting uh, federal legislation and federal regulations, and and we know how to write subsidies that actually promote uh, employment if that's what you want to do. Uh, but but you know just you know and 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 you can limit them i mean you you don't have to give them to the biggest companies in the world i mean you know because sure. it really is offensive to be subsidizing amazon but isn't sure. that a governor's bill the I, amazon i think it is yeah that's a governor's bill so there's something not right about that right and that's not about jobs i can't quite figure out what it is about i understand when loudon wants the data centers and they want the tax revenue um, and no jobs or very few jobs because then there are very few children to educate and all of that. You know, you don't have to build more houses and so on and so forth. You just have this big hunk of space that um, eventually is going to become obsolete, right? Because the computer, I come from that industry, the computers are just going to get smaller and faster and they'll need less um, space at some point. So I don't quite get the Amazon one. And I totally agree with you about that's foolishly. It almost makes me want them to bring the commanders to Virginia. It's almost a better way to spend your money, which is really something hard for me to say. Um, I detest football, um, but it's that's a very weird one. I don't get it. There's some there's some quid pro, pro quo in there somewhere. Well, this is clearly quite a contentious issue, and maybe we should uh, schedule a whole separate meeting of our working group um, to focus on, you know, brainstorming around some of these ideas. So thank you, Carol, for raising that. And um, great. any other, I, I saw that you put your um, 
Yes, that's my email address. Feel free to follow up and um, stay in touch. Uh, happy to help. And um, if there's any way I can help with the bills that you guys have remaining, uh, I'll try to, if I see any any names that have been mentioned on this call in the hallway, I might um, grab them for a second, chat with them, see where their head's at. But okay. I, I do have to jump off, unfortunately. I've, I've got another call coming up. But um, all right, well, appreciate all your time. You. You've been more than generous with your time, so we greatly appreciate it. And thank good luck so this week. Thanks. Thank appreciate you. It. Thank have you a great much. day. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Wow. I need a moment there. Um, uh, I think we'll start our uh, regular, back to our regularly scheduled program here. So Meredith, you all, or some of you may know, is our resident Kiwi, originally from New Zealand. So uh, she wanted to share this and uh, give us- Yeah, just a- um a mention since this is why we do this work and uh, New Zealand is having similar impacts from climate change that we are and that um, they're getting their rain in more intense downfalls. Um, so it had been gradually raining, the, the, the ground was saturated and then torrential and it hit during rush hour on Friday and nobody was prepared and there's a car in the distance there where two girls were rescued um, just around the corner from my brothers actually two other vehicles that people needed help getting out of too so yeah it's, uh... so we uh, might be going in reverse order <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we want to quickly do a catch up on the other bills that we've still got alive um, and talk about our next activities and cover the lobby days. So uh, Monique's going to cover the, the, the brick walls data. Well, just really quickly, we just wanted to highlight the, the three committees we have our eyes on um, because we have been focused on the Senate brick wall, the, the stalwart uh, strength of the Democrats. Um, we've gotten a lot of reassurance from them, although we are we are um, just as concerned as you, Annette, on that the, that Dominion bill and this a bit, a seeming consensus that they're starting to to get. But we'll wait and see. Um, we've had some positives where the EV the the clean car standards have have been dismissed. Uh, the the Reggie bill to repeal Reggie was dismissed. Um, so we're seeing some positives, but there's going to be a lot of action. Um, so this was just really to highlight these, these, uh, key committees and, um, the important lawmakers. And we, when we do our call to actions and things, we are trying to target in some cases, uh, the entire committee, or as we move into floor votes, uh, that will spread out a little bit more. I don't know if other, anyone had anything else to add on this? Slide, or we'll move on to the bills. Just have a question on the um, the the bills we were talking about, the Saslo bill, twelve sixty five, and the the other the kind of the opposing bill, the Affordable uh, Act. Chris, I think she's going to hit that on the next slide. Uh, okay. The individual bills. But if you have oh. a specific. If you have a specific question, I'm happy to hear it. So I make sure I cover it. Okay, I'll put it out there. If we could see the next slide, so I can see the bills, that'd be great. Okay, I'll hold then. Okay. Um, actually, well, just yeah, a bunch of us did attend lobby day, so thank you that all that that all of you that did. And if there's anyone on the call that hasn't done a lobby day, I highly recommend the the organized lobby days. They they set the appointments, uh, made it pretty easy, and give us all a little bit of energy to keep doing this work. Um, but moving here, we, we've divided our bills up into those we support and oppose. And this is the actual tracker that you see on the website. Um, it's on the Virginia Grassroots website, and you can see the, the climate and clean energy segment. Uh, so really quickly, 
Um, you can see pretty much the action in the House and Senate. So we're just gonna focus on the bills that are still in play. Uh, 1604 is the companion bill to uh, McClellan's bill um, to try to get proper SEC oversight. Um, and that's right now been um, uh, sent over to, to committee and we're just waiting to see that scheduled. Um, so that's on the, that's the House uh, um, Commerce and Energy Committee. And I have not seen that come up on the docket. If anyone else has, let me know. Uh, we're going to skip the ones that are tabled unless you have a specific question. The uh, 2267, this uh, similar to the, the uh, reform of SCC oversight um, uh, in general for both APCO and Dominion, this 2267 is looking specifically at the rate adjustment clauses. We've talked about those before, the riders. Um, and this one too, we're, uh, this is in uh, commerce and um, energy. So we're waiting to see that one scheduled. Um, I think that uh, Amy was gonna talk about these study bills. Right. So there are two study bills that uh, we, as as Suhas was saying, you know, it's kind of like what we have to accept uh, when when we can't get action. So there are two study bills that we're following, um, HJ 522 and HJ 545. 522 is uh, study on the data centers and their impact uh, on climate and infrastructure and so forth. And that is coming up along with the other one um, tomorrow morning in the House Rules Committee. Um, that one is that is patroned by Delegate Rome and a companion bill for this study is uh, Senator Peterson, which we've had a call to action on. The other um, HJ 545 is a study to promote the availability of renewable energy for local governments to purchase. So um, that's something that we have a call to action on and we'll be putting that in the chat because both of those bills are coming up first thing in the morning. And so if you haven't done a call to action on those, tonight is the time to do it. Um, I did put in the chat the link to our webpage and any of these take action buttons are a shortcut to the, the one click action. Great. Thank you, Meredith. Okay, so Great. back to you, Moni. Sure, back to um, SB 848 is the Barbara Favola bill. And I know uh, Susan Stillman has worked uh, closely on that as well. We are very happy to see that reported out on Friday at, from the rules committee. They didn't even have a discussion. We had a bunch of people there to uh, stand up and support the bill. I was there, um, but we are very happy to see it passed. Um, it wasn't unanimous, but it was uh, pretty close. Um, so that's, that's positive. I don't, you know, you, I guess we won't see what happens until it goes over to the, the House side. Um, 1083 um, is, there are a couple of bills, uh, uh, Delegate Subramania mentioned these shared solar programs. So there's a few bills to reduce the fee. Um, as I understand it, uh, they're gonna probably pull out, uh, the, the member will withdraw 1083 for this session, as I understand it, and there's a rewrite for um, for Senator Serval on the shared minimum 1266, and this is something apparently the governor's office has been supportive. He wants to see any costs come down that we can, and um, there have been just a lot of negotiations, and right now this one is going to be a rewrite that I heard about over the weekend. It's not going to be a clean, reduce the current fee, which is $55, which makes it onerous for people to participate in shared solar. These are This is for people that live in apartments or can't put solar on their own homes. Uh, there is a program out there. 
it's just with that minimum, it's it's detrimental. Um, whoops, we went oops, too far. Sorry. Ahead. <laughs> Um, and then, and sorry if I'm going on too much on that, but happy to talk more about any of the shared solar and what what an Intel I've heard. Um, 1321, Chris, to get to your question, this is the um, this is the Affordable Energy Act, um, and you know this is the one. It's McClellan and Deeds uh, that are supporting this, and you know this is on the docket for. Um, Monday afternoon. In fact, all three of these bills, uh, 1083, 1266, and 1321 are all on the docket to be covered. I do think that 1083 is going to be withdrawn. So there's going to be a lot of action um, tomorrow afternoon, and it's not in the subcommittee anymore. It's actually going to be at the committee tomorrow afternoon when the Senate um, when the Senate uh, moves on to committee work in the afternoon. It's in the obviously the, the, the Commerce and, and Labor Committee. Uh, at that same committee, when we get to the opposed bills is the 1265. And I, I, I do know that order matters because we saw this happen in the subcommittee meeting. They did the Dominion bill, which is a 1265, the, the, the discussion and vote first. And then when it came up to this SEC oversight bill, which is what 1321 is. It's short, it's sweet, it just says let's give SEC the proper oversight um, to look at rates and return overcharges. Um, they, they were told, oh, it's in conflict with this other Dominion bill, or it's already included in the Dominion bill. So I think it'll be interesting to see what order they discuss this in tomorrow, uh, but a bunch of us will be on that. Um, call and we'll raise our hands to do Zoom testimony. Um, and we do continue to have an action on that one as well um, that you can get to you from our page or we can drop that into the chat. Um, I think that my colleagues will take over on SJ240 and then we'll move over to the opposed bills. And um, I will just add that Chap Peterson um, has, added, has added his name as patron to the Affordable Energy Act SB 1321. So it's good to see some momentum. And on the House bill, um, we added, um, see it has a Republican chief patron. It's got um, an additional Republican patron and our newest delegate, Holly Siebold, also put her name on that one. So. Um, like to see momentum like that. And SJ 240 is Senator Peterson's um, companion to Delegate Rome's. It's a study of the impacts of data center centers. Um, and that has not yet been scheduled. It's not on the docket yet. Um, Chris, are, are you still just waiting to talk about Senator Saslaw's bill? Uh, yeah, no, that was just to kind of a comment, and it's a little late, but, but um, for for it's both the the Senator Saslow's bill, but also but more so even the uh, thirteen twenty one uh, the opposing bill, uh, and maybe also the HB sixteen oh four. All of these, um, and it's a little late for the the committee kind of call to action since it's going to be heard tomorrow. But that may be true for uh, when they come to the floor. Uh, are, are those bills that we should make for the call to action? Shouldn't we include Republican legislators in our call to action? Because generally we only do call to action to Democrats, but. It seems like those bills are actually those that could be somewhat bipartisan and that could, you know, the only way that they may pass is to kind of get some Republican to uh, be on it. Uh, yeah, so um, right. yeah, that would just be my comment is uh, I'm wondering if uh, on, on this particular kind of uh, rate and uh, regulation bills, uh, we should extend the call to action. I think that's a great suggestion and you know it's it's too late to do that for the com the commerce and labor committee yeah, yeah. tomorrow or tomorrow but what you know assuming that this gets out of committee 
um, as a standalone bill, then I think you know you're right that we would um, expand the call to action to include um, Republicans, and certainly on the House side. But um, you know it's still not even on the docket over there yet. So yeah, I I think it's a great idea, Chris, and we might even want to lean in a little bit more on the cost issue like you know this is raising customers costs and we we do mention that um and i i have to go back and reread the copy but i, I think that's a great idea thank you yeah yeah so the so, first one that's uh, at the top here uh, is that the is is that the rip sullivan bill also uh and yes. is yeah. that, that do do we know when that one's going to be heard mm -mm. hasn't been scheduled we keep okay. watching for it yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the on the opposed bills, I think we're we're doing pretty well on this side. Um, the all of the clean car standards bills that were killed in the Senate, as as we've shared. Um, we do have a couple calls to action outstanding that you can see. Um, one just went up in the last day or so, that HB 1430, and that relates to uh, a special carve out that has been requested by these heavy manufacturers to try to avoid the Virginia Clean Economy Act charges. Um, they claim that they are um, adversely affected by trade, these companies. And so in order to compete with other uh, foreign, <clears throat> foreign companies, it, they, they need an exception from the Virginia Clean Economy Act. We killed this one last year um, and we're hoping to kill it again this year. Um, so, encourage everybody to, to do that call to action. Um, there's a bill that passed in the house that would, it, it's, a, it's a bill that's sponsored by the gas, uh, American Gas Association and conservative legislative lobbyists to try to ban local governments from being able to limit the availability of natural gas for in, in new constructions. So unfortunately that passed the committee in the house. Um, there was a bill in the Senate um, that Senator Morrissey was a Democrat was sponsoring. Um, we believe that, that, uh, that he will strike that, um, but we'll, we'll be following this HB 1783 as it goes further through the House and potentially over to the Senate. And the last, um, the last one here that we have as a take action to oppose is that SB 1265, which is the Sazlaw bill. And um, you know, we we've in addition to being present in Richmond last week, we've been doing the call to action. Um, as Monique mentioned, a couple of us are planning uh, to give, tes give um, testimony by Zoom tomorrow. Um, we really still don't think that this uh, bill should stand. I spoke to Senator McClellan over the weekend um, and I, I told her that we really don't want her Affordable Energy Act to be wrapped up into this 12, SB 1265 because we won't be able to support it if it is coupled with what Dominion's trying to do here. Yeah, unfortunately, Dominion didn't have to do a study bill, <laughs> um, which they really should because this is extremely complicated. And what we heard is some of the things they're going to propose tomorrow at 9 a.m., like right before, and then, you know, they'll probably just deliver the, the substitute bill right before the committee meeting in the afternoon. They're looking to do securitizing uh, fuel se securitization and 
they're adding all kinds of really technical financial finance um, arrangements, and they're. I, I think this play that uh, the delegate talked about. You know, they're putting in process something that they don't have to do right away. They could keep the costs low, and then they'll have all the processes to continue to raise rates. Um, they'll still have the renewable, the uh, rate adjustment clauses, the riders. So we really won't know until we see it. So un unfortunately, I can't be at the 9 a.m. meeting in Richmond tomorrow, but we have someone taking really good notes who's going to share and we'll um, if there's anything important, we can maybe change that CTA. Uh, I think we're going to have to see how the House votes, and then we're going to have to really climb all over them for the floor vote. And if I could just add a win here, that uh, attack on Reggie, SB1001, um, we got that passed by. Um, so that was the only bill attacking Reggie. So that's successfully um, dispensed with. And thanks everybody who has done calls to action. I just did a total count of about 140 um, individual actions, if you like. More, more emails than that, but um, keep up the good work. And Carol has a question. Yeah, uh, going back to uh, 1430, um, in my prior life, um, you know, there are two ways of solving the, the energy intensive um, trade exposed industries. One way is to exempt them locally. And the other is to border adjust for the uh, products coming in and impose a, you know, compensating adjustment on those guys. And that's, that's doable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and I don't know uh, whether it is worthwhile raising that argument uh, to say, uh, rather than exempting these guys, let's border adjust for the, the products coming into Virginia. It, you know, we, we maybe ought to do that. I, I, I mean, you know, it's doable. It's... Uh, probably a little more complicated than exempting uh, the Virginia industries, but you know, you can border adjust. Um, so Senator McPike has a bill that would create a study of these energy intensive trade exposed industries, which would be a ripe place for that kind of suggestion to go through. Um, okay. I believe, I believe that was approved in the House Rules, or the Senate Rules Committee as a study. And so we'll have to, um, it's not on our tracker uh, because it kind of came up late, but that is, I, I can get the information and share that with you as to where that bill is going, Carol. That would be great, you know, and and um, you know, this is just kind of uh, an opinion. It's, but it's always dangerous to give up something now in order to get something in the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we're talking about twelve sixty five, if you get good election results in November, then you know you can potentially roll back these future rate increases and stick with the you know the the, you know, so it's, it's, it's a dangerous lobbying tactic uh, to, to, to push your benefits into the future when, when other people can, can undo them. You know, that's just a thought. Well said. Yes. Any other questions or comments before we you know, we're probably about uh, at the end of our time, but um, I did want to put a plug in here for the data center uh, call to action, which, you know, Meredith has already put the link to all the calls to action in the chat. Um, and thanks to those of you who have been contributing to the, the great response we've had on the uh, calls to action. And as you heard from Suhas, you know, I think, I think it does make a difference. And our group is becoming more and more widely 
recognized and known um, by lawmakers and their staffs and, and other lobbyists. So um, kudos to all, all of you. Uh, <laughs> and um, I think, I think that brings us to the end of the agenda. Anybody have other issues to raise? I'm gonna stop sharing. Anybody else? I just wanna say, I'm kind of a beat. I uh, I know there's a lot of bills and the uh, th that big one from Saslo is is a, definitely a big uh, a, a issue. Uh, and there's not been a lot of successes on bills that uh, the Democrats want to pass, but that was kind of expected. But the fact that we seem to for now have pushed all of these really uh, more most critical ones, you know, the, the Reggie going, you know, uh, attack to Reggie, attack to clean car, attack to the Virginia Clean Economy Act, seem to be pushed successfully, except they might come back at it, even the governor, but, but for now, it, 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 so I see that as a really a very, I mean, a, a victory, really. Absolutely. And, you know, we've gotten into a lot of the weedy details tonight, and so apologies to those of you who, uh, prefer not to get so in the details, but um, you know we're in the thick of it here, and we have another about eight, nine days until crossover, and that's kind of the halfway point. That's when all the bills that have been considered in the Senate committees thus far have to be voted on by the full Senate, and if they pass the full Senate, then they go over to the House where they have to be heard by the House committee. And um, you know, if, if they pass a House committee, then they go to the House floor. Um, so you know, we're, we, we're kind of like halfway out the diving board here. And um, we, it, it's been a lot of work, honestly, the last week or two. And we expect the next few weeks to be a lot of work. And we just appreciate everybody who's been kind of hanging in there and um, doing lobby days and calls to action and attending these meetings. We, you know, it's... Um... Well, Amy and Monique and Meredith, thank you so much because you have done a ton of work. Uh, I, I know me just sitting as a foot soldier, it's so much easier. Just click, click, click. Oh, let me hear what they have to say. Yeah, I did do my lobby day, but thank you so much because it, I can just tell, it's so much work to track these things. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Uh, and for instance, the Suhas's Solar on Schools bill got docketed at four o'clock one day to be heard four o'clock the next day. It's oh. <laughs> just uh, as insane <laughs> as we, we knew it would be and more. <laughs> yeah. um, and we will be switching to Action Network for some uh, subsequent calls to action. So just be on a lookout for those in Louisa's um, in stairs communications and we will um take advantage of the quick way we can target those for anybody who doesn't know this i just learned it um for me it's much easier to just go on the virginia grassroots coalition calls to action yeah. and just go right down them and just mm -hmm. now the only problem is did i do this one already or I not know, that, I know. that's really <laughs> tricky and and i think it would be nice if we would post the date first you know, first put up because, but uh, in any event, if other people, I mean, because I get, you know, Luisa's and Wofa's and Chris's and <laughs> yours and like, well, just... we will definitely do the bingo sheet for after crossover and you'll have this paper next to you because we'll kind of have a better. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not your fault. I, I can't, I mean, I'm like, oh, maybe I did it to the subcommittee and I haven't done it to the committee yet. And maybe <laughs> I know. I'm and the I same just, way. I'm like going mm -hmm. back through everything. And yeah. I wanted to add one other comment. And Carol, I was really taken by your really good input on um, on these issues. And you know, there's always the opportunity to write a letter to the editor. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and yeah. there's also an opportunity for you to to get these points directly to your representatives. 
And I also would say what I, one of the things I learned in these meetings, we knew that we wouldn't necessarily always get to meet the member. If you can meet with the chief of staff or the key um, delegate, uh, I'm sorry, the aide, you know, the, the legislative aide or legislative assistant, and sometimes their titles are a little, they're misnomers because I met with um, Patrick Hope's legislative a assistant and she's like running the show. Um, so, and I had a full half hour with her and she was really on board. So then it's a, once you establish that relationship, you can actually go directly to that person and warn them or share these really good ideas, a uh, different way of looking at the issue um, and pitfalls or suggestions like you you made today, Carol. So, um, you know, and, he, and also don't be, I don't know if you've called your representative's office. That was scary to me. It seems easier to send an email, but if you pick up the phone and call and speak to somebody, that carries a lot of weight. And I think making that suggestion and then asking who can I send my note to, um, to round it out a little bit or as follow-up, I just wanted to offer those other tools that are out there for people. Yeah, I, and you know, I've uh, in addition to working on federal legislation and regulations, I've lobbied Congress, so I'm familiar with the meeting with the aides and uh, and the importance of uh, you know that's something that I have. Carol, are you a, a Citizens Climate Lobby member? Pardon? Are you in Citizens Climate Lobby? I, I'm I, I'm not. I, no, I mean, okay. but the but the the other thing I was going to say is uh, my main job these days is helping out with my two granddaughters, and so going to Virginia, uh, going to Richmond is hard. Uh, I, you know, picking up the phone is easier, but but I I I don't have a lot of flexibility in in, in joining lobby days, uh, which you know I. I've I've done in the past uh, when my own kids were in school, <laughs> but but I, I I don't I don't have quite as much flexibility now that I'm obligated to take care of the four year old and the one year old. Uh, so I, I have fun. a question <laughs> that I, I should know the answer to that, but the, last year and the year before there was a kind of an online system where we could comment on bills for the house side is that is there something like that this year yes um chris if you want to see um i have got one connection to the rules docket on our climate and clean energy working page we've got a panel on the side that is upcoming events and below it is um some calls to action that we're highlighting right there and underneath on one of those easy action kind of window is a link to the rules docket um it takes you to hard speak and you, you'll you, be able you to figure what? it out from there you you okay, can great. just put in in your browser hod speak and it takes you right there okay great i just couldn't remember the name yeah that's exactly yeah. What they, they don't open it until it's docketed hod okay, for house of De delegates and uh yeah i just signed up there for tomorrow morning so yeah no thank you i mean you never know who's looking at it but i guess it can hurt okay all right, excellent. And Maureen, thank you. I think everybody else has joined before. Um, Maureen, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Maureen O'Donnell. I'm in the same neighborhood as Amy in, uh, in McLean, and that's, that's how I'm on the call. So I'm engaged right now with a group in the neighborhood where we're trying to take action to raise appreciation for um, native plants and fight invasive plants and save trees. And so uh, Doug, Amy's husband, came and joined me with uh, a group yesterday and we were doing a community work day and I found out about this and this is this is stuff that's near and dear to my heart. So I really appreciate the uh, information and, and all your hard work. So in the calls to action, I'll be on it in the morning. Well, we appreciate you joining and look forward to your participation. Well, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, with that. Yes, we have not scheduled our next, uh, yeah. <laughs> our next call. You didn't miss that we <laughs> <laughs> didn't make that announcement. So thanks everybody. All right, good night. Thank good night. You. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.